All right, we're going to look at some more definite integral examples, but these are all examples where you use substitution and integration. So if you do not know about substitution and integration yet, if you do not know about that technique, then these definite integrals will not make sense. So make sure you know how to substitute in integrals. If you're familiar with that concept, let's look at some more examples. So here we go. The integral from 0 to 3 of e to the power 5t dt. Now we're not talking about areas at all. We are simply calculate indef calculating definite integrals. Later on, we're going to do some specific questions with areas, but for now, we're just looking at definite integrals. So we can find that antiderivative with a little bit of playing around, but if we had to use substitution, we would say let u, or whatever I choose to let my new variable be, be equal to 5t, du is then 5dt, I only have a dt, so dt is then 1 over 5du. Now I'm planning to make a substitution, so I'm planning to get rid of all the t's and replace them with some form of u. Now, these limits of integration, 0 and 3, they are linked to my variable t. I'm saying t goes from 0 to 3. So as soon as I do my substitution, I need to see what's happening to u. So if t is equal to 0, then u is going to be 5 times 0, which is also 0. If t is equal to 3, then u is 5 times 3, which is 15. So now when I make my substitution, I've got to substitute everything. All signs of t must disappear. So u goes from 0 to 15. I've got 1 over 5 e to the power u du. So all the t's are gone now. Now I can calculate my antiderivative. It's 1 over 5 e to the power u between 15 and 0. So that's 1 over 5 e to the power 15 minus e to the power 0. And we know e to the power 0 is just 1. 1 over 5 e to the power 15 minus 1. All right, let's look at the next one. I see my exponent 4 minus x squared. Its derivative is here, x, in some form or another. So I'm going to say let p be equal to 4 minus x squared. dp is then minus 2x dx. I've got an x dx, so that's minus a half dp. Now I see x goes from 0 to 2. So if x is equal to 0, then p is going to be 4. If x is equal to 2, then p is going to be 4 minus 4, which is 0. So I make my substitution. I have minus a half the integral from 4 to 0 of e to the power p dp. Now take note, I'm going from 4 to 0. I can swap the limits of integration and multiply that minus with a minus. Or I can just use it as it is. There's no problem with that. So that's minus a half times e to the power p between 0 and 4. So that is minus a half times e to the power naught minus e to the power 4. And e to the power naught we know is just 1. So it's minus a half times 1 minus e to the power 4. Now, whatever you do, do not take your calculator and calculate e to the 15 or e to the power 4 and give me ugly decimal numbers because this is the exact answer. Rather stick to the e to the power unless if you need to use that number for further calculations. All right, let's look at this one. 0 to power of 4 of cos cubed t sine t dt. So now I need to decide what my substitution is going to be. Now, I see both sine and cos's derivatives are there. So technically, I can use both of them. But there's only one sine to the power t. So I'm going to let u be equal to cos t, because I've got a sine to the power 1, because then du is minus sine t dt. So that whole sine t is going to be swallowed up, and I'm not going to be left with any. So minus du is sine t dt. So t equal to 0 will then mean u is equal to cos of 0. You can use a calculator for that. I'll just use a quick graph. Cos of 0 is 1. t equal to pi over 4. 
means u is equal to cos of pi over 4, that's pi over 2, cos of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. So now I do my substitution, and I've got the integral from 1 to root 2 over 2 of minus u cubed du. So that's minus the integral from 1 to, oh, not no longer, I can find the antiderivative. A quarter u to the power 4 between root 2 over 2 and 1. And that, with a bit of work, should give you 3 over 16. You can check that if that's correct. It's just calculator work. All right, next two very similar ones, but we're going to do substitutions again for the first one. Well, the first one, we don't need to do a substitution, actually, because I've got one element in my denominator. So that's the same as the integral from 1 to e of 1 plus 8 over p. No substitution necessary here. That antiderivative is p plus 8 lin p. Now, it's lin of the absolute value. We'll talk about that shortly between e and 1. So that is e plus 8 lin e. Now, because the absolute value of e is already positive, I don't need the absolute value signs anymore. Minus 1 plus 8 lin 1. 1 is already positive, so I don't need that absolute value. Now, lin of e is 1. Lin of 1 is 0. So that gives me e plus 8 minus 1 is e plus 7. All right, so we did not need substitution for that one, but the next one we need substitution for. Now, there's a couple of things here. I can't simplify this very easily. If I look at that more complicated function and I say let u be equal to r squared plus 2r, du is then 2r plus 2 dr. So the question is, is du present? Not totally. I only have an r plus 1. But we see we can take a 2 out. So a half du will be r plus 1. So that is what I've got. Now I need to look at the limits of integration. r is equal to 1. That means u is going to be 1 plus 2, which is 3. And r equal to 2 means u is equal to 4 plus 4, which is 8. So now I make my substitution, and that's the integral from 3 to 8. I've got a half. I can write that in front. And I've just got 1 over u du. So again, we've got a lin function, so that's a half lin absolute value of u between 8 and 3. Now, if either of these numbers were negative, this absolute value will change it to a positive number. But we don't have that. So that's a half lin 8 minus lin 3. And we don't have to calculate that as a decimal number unless if we use it for a further calculation, we can leave it just like that. And that's correct. So that is the concept of the definite integral. Carrying on, we're going to link this to areas between curves.